So we're going to have Angie Feidler Sutton from the Geekery. And then following the, her, we're going to have Melanie Gurges from Austria. Hi. Thank you for being here. I just wanted to know how familiar you were with the books before getting involved with the show. Um, well, for me, I've been reading the books since third grade, and uh, it's been really great to be able to experience uh, filming the books I've read since I was in third grade, I guess. <laughs> what about you guys? This is the first interview. Of the How many day. times have yeah. you read them? I've read the book seven times. The first seven time. now? Seven, yeah. Oh I read them in high school. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think that's pretty much how we all feel. I mm -hmm. We were huge fans of the books before. I, I mean, me personally, I was a huge fan before I even knew that they were starting a show. So getting to play such an iconic character has been, like, just amazing. Mm -hmm. And to add on to that, <laughs> um, I literally agree with all what they said. Um, actually, before I had got the part for Percy Jackson, I was at school writing um, a mini essay on Percy Jackson, actually. And like when I found that I got the part and stuff, I had to do a little book in my school assignment. And I found out that I had did the essay because I kind of forgot for a second. So it was super exciting to know that I spoken to Percy Jackson. <laughs> Up next, we have Melanie G from Austria. And following Melanie, we're going to have Karen Butler from UPI. Hi, this is Melanie. I was just wondering if you could be any Greek god for one day, which one would it be? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a very good question. Oh. We get like all of their powers. Um, I'd say Hermes mostly because he can fly. Mm. I, I I would say I mean I kind of have to say Poseidon. Yeah, right? That is, but Hermes is a good answer. I would choose. I would. I might choose Hermes to be led by Mama Miranda. Yeah. Oh yeah. Specifically. Yeah. I would definitely choose Athena, which is my mother, because I want to be her. Uh, and um, either yeah, either Athena. Or Zeus, because I have control of everyone. Oh, that's good. That's good, yeah. I would, uh, I think, Hephaestus, because I'm really not good at fixing things. <laughs> and this would be an awesome skill set to have. Yeah. I'm I'm with Leah. Zeus seems like a pretty good gig. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Karen um, Butler from UPI. Following Karen, we're going to have Christopher G. Hello. I was just wondering what you loved about your char these iconic characters and how you made them completely your own. How <laughs> uh, um, um, oh, we made them our own. Well, really, um, I took this character and I mixed it up. Like, and like when I say mixed it up, like I made sure that I still had. Annabeth, but also giving my natural self. And I think that that really played um, a big good part in stuff. Like I would like, I have a goofy side of me, but I also have that straightforward, serious, let's get straight to the point um, person. And like, I definitely didn't just mix Annabeth with like, guys, stop, you're so jokey. But like, <laughs> like um, that, and that would be really crazy. But um. I uh, definitely, like Mr. Rick, he told us to like be ourselves when we film this. So like, I think that's what made the chemistry really good between all of us with um, playing this part, but still giving Annabeth, Percy and Grover at the same time. Yeah, I'm, I kind of agree with that. Um, I don't think I really made him my, I mean, I we all kind of did in a way, but uh, I think it was more like for the show, it uh we kind of tried to ground it a little bit more in real life you know and so um uh i think that it's really important to remember that he's still a 12 year old kid yeah and so he kind of i mean kids throw tantrums sometimes they get angry <laughs> i think it like it's it's much more of an emotional journey for him you know mm -hmm. yeah um i i completely agree like we we all kind of brought ourselves into the character um, I, what I really liked about Grover is that he kind of starts out like really, he's kind of like skittish, a little cowardly, uh, but he's still, you can still see that he's always willing to put himself in front of his friends and 
kind of like Walker said, like that that journey that all of us go through. Um, Grover like kind of comes out of his shell a little bit more and is more willing to kind of throw himself in front of danger to protect the people that he cares about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Up next, we have Christopher G. from Cover Geekly. And following Christopher, we're going to have Rachel Leishman from The Mary Sue. Hello, guys. So let's get this started. So every Percy Jackson fan knows about Perkabeth, which is a really cute dynamic that the two share throughout the series. How do your performances begin to showcase that? And what are your favorite moments that bring that dynamic out? Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of great uh, moments and the show um i think one of my favorite moments is in the tunnel of love yeah. uh kind of a basic answer but <laughs> i think it really kind of sets up the relationship for the rest of the series i agree um, <laughs> but um 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 must am i must say okay. wait uh actually uh i actually agree with what he said in the tunnel of love because i think that that's really when the um that you can start to see the the chemistry and the intenseness of how the friendship is building into it basically if that makes sense um because like you know definitely at first it was like annabeth and percy were like like um enemies almost to each other like one is like being all jokingly the other's like stop doing that please so like <laughs> you know so but definitely like um, that's what really built the character and stuff. So, like, I do agree. Like, when it was in a ton of love, that's what made them realize, like, oh, this person not so bad, and you know, you're not so bad either. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. All righty, up next is Rachel from the Mary Sue following josh from comic book movies and quick reminder for all of our press please state who your question is for if it's for all town any peace please say please say so thank you hi guys so uh this is for all of you uh since you guys are all such big fans going to camp half-blood is obviously such kind of a big dream for every percy jackson fan so what was it like getting to be on that set and experience Camp Half-Blood and get to be a part of something so iconic for this franchise? A really good question. Um, well, for me, it's, uh, I'm just, I'm sorry, I have to think about this for a second. That's a good <laughs> question. Yeah. Um, I was, I was going to say, um, I think it was really, really surreal. I guess it's the only way to put it, but um, it was just really weird being there, you know, because you've been imagining it for so long and finally getting to see it is like, it's not real, you know? Um, I've never seen people bring something that was um, just like a, a story to like, just like a story that was written out to life so good like i've never seen somebody bring so much detail from a book and actually add it like like the specificness of how they said the grass look or how the trees look everything in the book was literally like it came out like it, it wasn't like oh well maybe we should change that a little bit it was like no we specifically want this like that one piece of bark is red or something like <laughs> like they brought everything to life thank you guys uh <laughs> so like like i just like what Walker said, like, uh, it was very surreal because, like, when they were first, like, okay, we're going to bring you to Camp Padlet, I was like, okay, cool. And when I went there, like, I walked out feeling like I actually lived in that book. And, like, it was, it was very, very um, surprising and very unimaginable, if that makes sense. Yeah. I forgot my word. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think what was what was amazing for us seeing it come to life was um, it's the first time I've seen hundreds of background artists put a shirt on and their whole body changed. Yeah. They because all the kids that were at the camp were 
were so connected to the books themselves that them being able to put these orange shirts on and honor this book and and play these roles it was just it was overwhelming just seeing the excitement from everybody who was there it was it was just um it was really powerful powerful moment awesome thank you guys thank you thank you thanks up next we have josh from comicbookmovie.com Hey guys, so uh, for Walker, I was wondering how much did working with actors like Ryan Reynolds and Owen Wilson on previous projects as a young actor help prepare you to take center stage in a series like this one? And is there a chance we might see you reunite with those guys in Deadpool 3? Um, <laughs> not that I know of, but uh, I think I learned a lot of valuable lessons from them that I used while filming Percy Jackson. And um yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not hopefully to reunite someday, but uh yeah, I don't know. You want to do the monologue? <laughs> I would, but since it's Disney Plus. Gotcha. Ah uh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next we have Mike from TV America. And following Mike, we have Diego from Award <laughs> Radar. There we go. Okay, uh, Walker. Um, I was off for a few minutes, so I hope this didn't get asked already. Uh, the um, when I was watching you first being new to the camp, and it looked like you were completely overwhelmed. I was thinking about how you know in your own life you were in a military family, you moved around a lot and changed a lot. So I was wondering if that background kind of influenced you as an actor, helped you to become an actor, and if it kind of reflected on you when you were in person who's constantly being overwhelmed by new situations. Uh, that is also a very good question. Um, and I think I feel like in a bit, yeah, in in a way, um, mostly I think that helped with. I mean, I think that helped the most with um, being an actor, just in general, because my dad is so used to like moving around a lot, and our whole family is. So it wasn't really a big change from going to that to acting. So. Um, I think it prepared our family very well for this. So, yeah. And, and did you, because you had to be in new situations all the time, did that make you a little bit more of an actor in real life? Did you tend to put yourself out there more because you had to keep being new? I guess it does, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Up next, we have Diego from Awards Radar. And then following Diego, we have Brenda. Uh, Patron. Hi, uh, good morning to everyone. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, um, for the cast, you've read the books a lot and you said uh, you related to the characters and you wanted to bring all of that into the series, but from each of your characters, what can you say that this is me, this is my mannerism, this is my way of doing things, which parts of yourself did you implement in those kids? Walker's definitely very uh, rebellious. <laughs> <laughs> Mischievous. Yeah. Um, I think Percy's sense of humor. I have a very similar sense of humor to him. Uh, yeah. I think so. Um, I would take Annabeth's vulnerability um, from her. Like, um, I'm going to try to keep my short. I know I talk a lot. But, uh, um, <laughs> like, uh, definitely, I think... Her vulnerability also, while bringing out the focusness of her, I feel like I can definitely be focused, but also have a a deep sensitivity to me as well that I took from her. Um, for Grover, I one of my favorite things, like you know, reading his character in the books, was how connected he is to everyone, like he, that he cares about, which is a trait that I really admire in him, and it's something that I really want to like try and take from you know that character and put it into. This, this story as much as I can. Also walking like a Thank goat. So much, also guys. walking a like a goat, day. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you guys, have a beautiful day. Thanks. Thank you. All right, up next, we're gonna have Cherry from Cherry, Los Angeles, USA. Hi, um, I have a question. What scene from the book were you most excited to film? 
And then what scene are you most excited to share with fans who will be watching the show on Disney Plus? Thank you. Um, the Aries fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, come on. It's the Aries fight. For both. It's turned out so well. I don't even think there needs to be an explanation. It's yeah. the Aries fight. It's the Aries fight. <laughs> It is the Aries fight. It is the Aries fight. Um, also, the Council of Cloven Elders uh, scene was really fun. I'm not sure if it made it to the final cut or not, but it was just this day of like everyone was dressed like me. Everyone was like bleeding. Like I, no one talked with like words except for me. And by the end of the day, I could like understand word by word what everything meant. It was so much fun. Um, that's a good question. Um, the Aries fight. Aries fight. <laughs> Aries fight. We're all here for the same reason. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I think that the, these relationships between these kids, I think were, were really what, um, what got me excited about the book. The first time I read it, got me excited about the project when we came on and, and, um, watching these guys inhabit that and, and take stuff, um, and make it so human and so much fun, um, was really, was really pretty, pretty outstanding. I'm very excited for people to, I guess, see the book in a different way. Um, I mean, I think for me, it was, we got to do some pretty amazing creature design yeah. in this show. Things that I think have never been seen like this ever. Um, and so for me, it was the Chimera, Chimera fight oh, between yeah. Percy so at the top cool. of the arch. Um, it was just pretty epic. And Walker's amazing in it. And it's uh, I'm, I'm excited for everyone to see that one. So our next question is coming from Brenda Patrone. Um, it's for all of you. So how did it feel to work mo most of the cast as teenagers? How did that feel? Was it a challenge? Was it fun on set? Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I it was. I mean, it was kind of like strange at first. Um, like realizing that, like when we started, I was 16, 15 or sixteen. Walker was like twelve. Um, something like that, and it was strange because they carry themselves with so like with so much more maturity than you would expect of like a 12 year old and it was it was it was I got I got to work alongside like peers instead of you know having to this is gonna sound like kind of mean but babysit it like it was, <laughs> they were they were really good you do a little baby you had to do a little bit of babysitting but you know we learned from everything uh yeah I mean it's certainly made it a lot more fun because <laughs> there's more kids on set uh it's i love working with adults they're great but sometimes it's fun to have someone your own age there like leah or Orion. um they're like similar in age so yeah i also agree um because a lot of my um um shows or like movies that I've been on it's always been with adults mm -hmm. so actually this was like I think this was like my first um film actually with uh kids because like um I had one where I had a brother but like more than one uh kid this was definitely my first one so like I'm used to like being like oh yes Mr. Mrs. and all that stuff and for a second because Aryan was older than is older than me I I think one day I went to him and I was like um Mr. Aryan and then, yeah. I was like, oh. and then he looked at me like huh <laughs> I was like oh I did not mean to say that I am so sorry <laughs> like I was just trying to be as respectful as I can so I was That's trying to be to you please <laughs> Wow. Okay, Mister. Um, <laughs> anyway, but like, um, most definitely, it was the most awkward thing you could have ever seen. Like, I went to him and I was like, Mister Aryan, and he just gave me the biggest side eye. Like, what are you talking about? So, like <laughs> that day, I didn't talk to him for like six hours. I was embarrassed, <laughs> but yeah, I do agree with them though. And then John and Dan, what was it like to work with a, a mostly kid cast? Um. I think on this show it's easy to forget. I think um, the show doesn't really, um, it doesn't behave like a show um, for kids or with kids. I think, um, and I think a lot of that is is really um, a tribute to these guys and and to to the rest of the cast that everybody was such a pro 
Um, and not just showing up for work and not just working hard, but handling really complex emotional stuff um, that I think is um, is hard for any actor. Um, it's a story about what it's like to um, hurt people you love, um, what it's like to um, be in a complicated relationship with a parent. Um, and I think the more um, the more they were able to pull that off, the easier it was to forget that um, that everyone was 16 and 13 and and <laughs> and 12 um they they did an amazing job they also they they even though they you guys were such pros the entire time they just brought such a joy to the making of it to the set being silly having a good time coming with the greatest energy every day that it was contagious it, the entire crew just felt it and and just was having a ball the entire time we were making it um and that's a tribute to you guys up next, we have Francisca from We Got This Covered, and on deck, we have Miguel Morales. Hi, everyone. Uh, my question is for Mr. Steinberg and Mr. Schotz. So with the series, you do get a bit more space to make a faithful adaptation, uh, but still things do inevitably end up getting cut. So my question was, how do you toe the line between maintaining the essence of the source material and successfully bringing the story to a completely different medium like TV. Thank you, guys. Um, it's a good question. I think it's um, uh, it's a little more art than science, I think. I think as, as you're reading the book, um, it starts in terms of trying to form um, a sense of what really is contributing to the sense of the journey, to the important moments, um, to the stuff you remember a couple of days later. Um, I think that conversation became much more detailed and much more um, uh, substantive um, once you're in conversation with Rick and with Becky about the things that they have those feelings about, um, the things they feel like this wouldn't be a Percy Jackson story or Percy Jackson journey without. Um, and then from there, you just start planting flags and things and, and feeling like um, if this wasn't in the show, I think as a fan, I'd be disappointed. So that's got to be in there. And trying to figure out how to stitch everything together in a way where um, nothing feels extra, um, nothing feels like it's there just because we wanted it to be there. It all has to be part of a story that um, that functions organically and and that makes you feel like um, it 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 was always built this way, even though it's it's in the middle of um of a, a pretty serious adaptation. Up next, we have Miguel from R Seven, and following that, we have India E Times. Hi guys, Miguel from Brazil. Movies and TV shows are full of props and there are lots of real things on set. You, you guys take anything home after filming? <laughs> <laughs> on camera, no. Everything is where it should be. Um, These guys took everything. Yeah. Um, I did take the sword. I took two <laughs> swords. I took a metal one and the bamboo one because I can't You got go the metal home. one? Yeah, how'd you get I did. for security? Um, <laughs> so, well, I think I kind of forced him to give me the metal one on accident because <laughs> I kept telling him I was going to steal it. And I think they believed me. <laughs> so I think they had to like, I'm pretty sure there's a whole meeting about it. But um, <laughs> I did get to take the metal one. I got to take my armor. And uh, they told me I could only take one outfit. But I just put them all in a duffel bag and left. <laughs> so, I'm a little afraid to go back. Yeah. Um, I I managed to get a hold of the the shoes, the flying shoes that that me and Walker wear, the the ones that Luke gives us. That's I, I wear them on almost a daily basis. <laughs> um, and I think I also got like a set, like one of the bamboo swords of Riptide and his shield from Capture the Flag. That was really cool. Oh, and the Myth of Magic cards. Oh, yeah. I got like a full deck of those. Um, I actually took a whole centaur home with me. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, I, yeah, I took the whole thing. You uh, took the uh, You took the horse? I, I took him. Uh, guys, like, I literally, I was like, you're coming with me. So, I um, took it home. No, actually, let me stop. Um, but what I did was um, I got two shields. I have my own personal, and I have the Camp Pablo shield. And I have the necklace uh, with my father's ring on it. I also have my jacket. <laughs> sorry that I sorry that I um that I wear in the show. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Did you get your dagger? 
I did. Yes, I did. Um, I wanted to get the middle one, but I couldn't because so I, <laughs> I did not force them. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> but I did get that, and I did get one thing, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. So I did get another thing, but yeah, that was great. <laughs> what you take? <laughs> now I'm worried. No. I promise you, it was. We it won't was, miss it. We, it, it was. You're good. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. Twenty thousand. Walker's yeah. gonna be jealous. We, uh, oh. John and I took Aries' sword. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, hanging it over the mantle. Okay. Oh. I, as long as it looks cool. Yeah. Presented in your house. <laughs> I actually got a sword stand specifically for Riptide in my room. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I got the helmet. I put oh, on display. Yeah. Oh, you got the helm. You got we got the helm too. Oh, like, the helm, the, the helm yeah. of darkness. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. I'm glad you told us this yesterday. <laughs> you can raid our offices. <laughs> our next outlet is India E Times, followed by Brain Damage France. Hi guys, hope you're well. Yeah, uh, my question is to Walker, and the question is, what did you learn and unlearn from your co-actors? What I learned from my co-actors. Um... That's a good question. Uh, I learned a lot of good tips for fighting scenes with Edge. <laughs> um, so I learned. I learned a lot. There was a lot of co-actors. I got to think about this. A lot of <laughs> there's a lot of people um, from Aryan and Leah. I learned a lot of good press things from Aryan. Aryan's way better like interviews than I am. <laughs> uh, still getting used to it. Still a little bit nervous, but. Um, also, I learned that from Leah. They're both very good at it. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, my question is to Leah Shava. So, my question is from Empire Beast, like something from Tiffany's. What do you feel that's different, uh, like in Percy Jackson, as a person and as an actor? Like, what do you feel it's different? What do you feel that it, you know, so special for you? Um... I feel like if I'm making a connection from Beast to Percy Jackson, in Beast, I was more scared of the monster, aka Lion. Um, I was definitely like very nervous, very scared and stuff, even though I did save everyone's life. Um, <laughs> like I always do. <laughs> but um, I um, was definitely more afraid and more scared. So, and like that put me into more of a be fearful of the monster and in percy jackson i'm more like come on show me what you got basically to the monster and stuff and i'm like i'm ready for it so like i had to switch from oh no i'm scared to guys stand back so like you know like um if i'm making that big connection um it's very it was fun challenging if that makes sense like um i liked how i was able to switch my character that's the big fun part of acting how you can change yourself to be anybody um but yeah i definitely like being this person where i'm screaming 24 7 to where i'm telling the person not to scream anymore yes. i like i went from to can you stop yelling please so like <laughs> so yeah so like it's super cool to do that but um again yeah that was a good question so um thank you all right up next is emily from monster donut Hi, everyone. Um, this is my question for everybody, which is, what is your favorite Greek myth? Ooh. Um, Orpheus and Eurydice, mostly because Hades Town is my favorite <laughs> like thing ever. I love Hades Town. And uh, it's just such a good myth. There's so many like versions of it. Each one is, I don't know, sadder than the last. It's, it's I think, my favorite myth. I think I'm going to have to go Achilles or Icarus. Oh, yeah. Both of them are pretty awesome. I can't pick. Um, also, I have a question about your um, name. <laughs> Monster Donuts, is that from the second one? The second book? It's you. Oh, yeah, the shop. That, yeah, the shop yeah. that, uh, that with yeah. the Hydra. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. A... I, I, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's I like, the, I like that name. Podcast. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Love your podcast. I'm going to listen to it Thank now. You. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> 
Hey, you wanna go? No, <laughs> stop. I'm trying to think. No. Favorite Greek man? Oh, don't matter. I know. <laughs> so many to pull from. Um, Daphne's gonna be upset. I'm not gonna say Theseus. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I um, I, I think I find myself um in in the Odyssey a lot. Um, in 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 all of its parts. I think when when especially um trying to put this together in a way um where you're trying to make this feel like a journey and you're going to need some spare parts um to to stitch pieces together in this book um that um you know to kind of make it work in this medium so that's um that's where i always run to and this is a cop out but i just we just got lost in all of them like it's what was so so amazing about what rick built is like you could just find uh, find your way through so many different myths and the ones obviously he pulled to to weave the story um but also we went back into so many myths to to add um for the series so there was just it was it's just all of it like it's just it's so amazing to immerse yourself in all of this mythology Next question is from Rolling Stone Brazil. And the question is, Percy Jackson has some very passionate fans. How did you make sure you were giving your best to bring these characters to life as faithful to the books as possible? Uh, that's a really good question. <laughs> Does anyone want to go first? Um, I think um, I think you have to be extremely respectful of it. I think you also, at the same time, have to not be afraid of it. I think um, you you commit to telling a story about this kid um, and trying to figure out how he and his friends are going to get through this and 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 making the story work on its own two feet, and then trying to figure out how to make sure that it is also doing all of the things um, that 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 book wants. I think um, it's 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 a constant balancing act between. Um, a real sense of reverence for the material um, and a willingness to try stuff. And, and I think having Rick and Becky on board um, makes that process possible. I think the the ability to um, pitch something new and then look at their faces and see if it's working um, <laughs> is, uh, is, is invaluable. So, um, you know, I, I think you, you kind of have to be able to walk both sides of that line at all times. And, and there's no one closer to this, this book series than the Riordans. And what was so impressive about them was they were they were open to looking at it themselves. You know, Rick wrote this 20 years ago and he was, you know, had some distance from it. So it was exciting to hear what things he wanted to do with it, how he wanted to explore different themes and ideas and dig deeper into into all of it. So it was just it was kind of amazing to watch. Um, and they were insanely collaborative um for us all to bring what we brought to it um so it, it was a special relationship all right that wraps today's press conference thank you all for attending thank you awesome. thank, thank you, you so much, much.